I have a photograph with my grandmother. It was on my second birthday in 1948, and they gave me a pedal car, and that was my first car. I used to keep that car covered with a sheet. My parents weren't car people, but my grandfather was. He drove Packard's 46 Chevrolet post-war, and a 37 Chevrolet was his pre-war car for work. My mother was able to put me on the front porch of our house, and I would be perfectly willing to sit there and not run away and just look at this car. My mom knew something was wrong with me and that I was, must have been a car person. So cars interweave their, their charm and their magic throughout my life. I had a bunch of jobs that were horrible for a kid, but I got a job in a gas station. And actually, to this date, that was probably the best job I've ever had. Everybody that worked there became brothers, and the man that owned the station became, in many ways, a father figure to us. He was agreeable that we could work on our cars on his time if all of his work was done and did everything. We had wonderful adventures there, but that's where we started to build our cars. And this was in the heyday of hot rodding. I built my first car, put a Chrysler motor in a Chevrolet body. But after the Army, back into school, in two years, I bought and sold cars. I would go through the paper every night and find something for $300 or $1,000 and clean it up, do whatever mechanically I had to do and sell it for a little more and actually made a living and put myself through school. I had 70 cars and eight motorcycles in two years. My name is Steven Dauria and I have a 1964 Mercury Marauder as raced in NASCAR in 1964. I used to go to the Riverside Raceway and watch all of the venues that used to race there. So to see a car of this size road racing was really impressive on a young mind like mine, and it always stuck with me. So how the car started was with the motor. My friend had the car's motor in a boat. He offered me the boat and the motor as a package. I wasn't a boat person. And I said, well, if I don't hurt your feelings, I just want the motor. The motor was originally in a passenger car. It was a 427 low riser dual quad motor that was in either a Mercury or a uh, Ford Galaxy. As many of the cars that had powerful motors and young people would buy them, it was wrecked. So I thought, well, I'll take the motor and I restored it and it sat on an engine stand with dyno time only under my bench. The engine sat for eight years uh, as I did other projects and then it was time to find some, a body to put in it. I thought a 54 Mercury Capri and then I thought the 1963 Bullet Nose T-Bird. Then this body came up for sale on eBay and it didn't sell twice. Uh, and so I emailed him and I said, do you want to collect this car or do you want to sell it? So I bought it for $1,500. Right from the beginning, this thing fought. I took all of the paperwork to the DMV and I was registering it. The woman that was doing the registration said, oh, my computer's gone down. Can you sit over there for a minute? As I was sitting, I see the highway patrolman come in with his Smokey the Bear hat and I knew that they were the inspector. Hmm, I bet he suspects that this is stolen. He motioned me to come over to the window and he says, you don't look like a car thief. I said, well, thanks for that. But the car comes back that it was stolen. He says, come on back here. I waited and he ran it again and he came back. He says, I don't know what to do. If it's stolen, it's stolen, but I have to give it back to somebody and I have nobody to give it back to. I'm gonna sign off on this. I said, okay, but I don't wanna hear this story come up again after I've put my heart and soul in this thing. And he said, nope. That's it, once I sign off. So that's how the project started. So I've enjoyed building this thing to the max. Halfway through the project, I started having a health issue. I was losing the use of my legs uh, little by little, and all of the doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. They said, you look healthy to me. 
after I'd mocked up the, the car, I found a race car prep shop that was very well respected, Mako Motorsports. Took the car to them to finish some of the, the things that would have taken me extra time. Anyway, they did the, the roll cage, they did the aluminum work on the inside of the car, and they did some of the chassis appointments, and that became problematic in itself, and they did a fabulous job, and they ended up having 12-inch rotors in the front. So the car really does stop nicely now. So now it's time for paint. My friend's paint shop was a man that I met in 1958. His son and I built model cars. So he said, would you like to see a race car? And we went to the man's shop. Ollie had just completed a Curtis Craft uh, chassis with an Offenhauser, raced it for three years at uh, Indianapolis. I was 10 years old or 11 years old. Ollie invited me to sit in the car. And when I got in, I said, this is what I want to do. He says, well, you better not grow. And you can't tell from uh, this shot, but I'm six foot six. I would never have made it as a race car driver. The car body work and everything was started there, ended up back in his shop. Uh, after being almost stolen for six months, I didn't know where the car was. A man that had come through uh, agreed to do some of the other body work and took it with him. And then he wouldn't pay his rent and he would always pick up in the middle of the night. And he did and nobody knew where he went. And I couldn't find him for six months, so I had no way of knowing where my body was. The body at that point was on a rotisserie, and so I had the chassis and the motor and the transmission and everything was here, but I didn't know where my body was. So after get, being repatriated with the body, I took it back to Arcadia Body Shop. Now it was under new ownership, they agreed to paint it. They were so enthused by the car, so they did a fabulous job, but I couldn't get the motor to cool. I tried everything, new radiators, fan clutches, mechanical fans, electric fans, uh, nothing would cool it. And I was so frustrated, it only had 400 miles on it, and I pulled the motor out, and it was a fresh, all sealed up, but I took it apart looking for what's the fault. And I had shot the motor with an infrared gun and got different readings all over the motor. It just didn't make any sense. The horsepower was a little underpowered for what I wanted for the car at 409 horsepower because I detuned it to run on pump gas. His mechanic and machinist knew my machinist and they conferred that there was nothing wrong with the motor and he took it. So I bought an aluminum block, FE block. It's now 502 inches and 602 horsepower and 672 pound-feet of torque. It's a monster, it's wonderful. So I put it back in and guess what? It wouldn't cool either. I was ready to shoot myself. One of my neighbors threw me a magazine and said, hey, there's a good article on cooling systems. You might want to read it. I knew that he knew what the flaw was. And when I opened the magazine, I zeroed in on the spot that said uh, pulley speed ratio. Since the motor had come out of a boat, it didn't have pulleys, it had wet stack. So I took the Ford pulleys off of another Ford, put them on there, and I was under driving the water pump, and that's why it wouldn't cool. I put a five inch pulley on there and it cools perfectly. The other motor would have been just fine in here. I got a little something extra for my money and it's 200 pounds off of the front end of the car, which certainly doesn't hurt performance, plus the extra 200 horsepower. As the use of my legs has deteriorated, what's gonna happen to the car, I don't know. I enjoyed looking at it and occasionally driving it. Just fun to build and I was so happy just to get to this point because I love it.